The large trees near the banks create portals for animals to transit on their way to the river. Thirsty warthogs approach with care, not knowing what predators might be lurking. Holes in the ancient trunks sometimes harbor beehives. The bees also have predators to worry about, including one of the most beautiful birds of the Chobe, the swallow-tailed bee-eater. A prodigious insect catcher, now and then it needs to regurgitate a pellet with all the undigested parts. This amazing bird gives its touch of color to the valley all year round. And so does the incredible lilac-breasted roller, also an efficient hunter of insects and other small prey. But other colorful birds are seasonal visitors. The winter is not yet over, but the first carmine bee-eaters are arriving from their northern quarters. Resident birds should better get used to them. Soon there will be many more. But there are other species of bee-eaters here, perhaps not too happy to share place and prey with the newcomers. The aptly named little bee-eater is no larger than a sparrow. It is the smallest African bee-eater, but still a handsome acrobat of the air. And then there is the white-fronted bee-eater. Also a resident here, it is a consummate insect chaser, able to capture such powerful flyers as this large dragonfly. In a matter of days, the favorite perching places of carmine bee-eaters get crowded with more and more arrivals. But the newcomers won't find the valley unguarded. Raptors, like the fish eagle and the pale chanting goshawk, are capable of hunting a bee-eater on the wing. And on the ground, monitor lizards are always ready to raid the nests for eggs or chicks. Still, the flocks are so big that such casualties barely make a dent in their numbers. The summer reaches of the Chobe make it all worth for them.